Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of every good gift that endures, only by your grace can we rightly understand the wonders of life and why it is given. By the word of your Son, challenge and our foolishness, confront our view, and shape our lives to the wisdom of the gospel. 
we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen.
Let your continual mercy, O oh Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the word. A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Hosea, chapter 11, beginning at the first verse. When Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities, it consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call, but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adnan? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my, my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God, and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. They shall go after the Lord who roars like a lion. When he roars, his children shall come trembling from the west. They shall come trembling like birds from Egypt, and I doves from the land of Assyria, and I will return them to their homes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. The song appointed for today is Psalm 107, verses 1 to 9 and 43. We shall read alternate verses. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim. Let the people be thanked in the green bread from the hand of the Lord. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, and from the north and from the south. Some wandered in their surface. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. And then they cried to the Lord to come to And he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Then they cried to the Lord for his mercy. He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Whoever satisfies the hungry with things. And I will see the mercy of the Lord. The Lord is our God and our Son. Thank you. 
reading from the Word of God, written in the letter to the Colossians chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For, for, have, for you have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever you do, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living in that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourself with the new, new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
and the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to Christ our Savior. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But Jesus said to him, Friend, who said to me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. The Gospel of Christ. the rise in the cost of living, 
the telling spaces on the supermarket shelves, the loneliness and other realities of the most vulnerable among us, and the instability in the political systems of this world, the question is being asked, where does my security reside? Some may quietly wonder, in whose hands does my security lie? The forthright challenge of Jesus to all gathered in his presence is unmistakable. Take care, double. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. My brothers and sisters in Christ, what we do with our gifts, our talents, our wealth, and our lives help create our personal world and affect the world at large. Jesus does not say that having wealth is detrimental to our well-being. He warns about the ugly cravings attaining wealth can arouse in us. Such hungers can undermine the human spirit, any human spirit. If we allow these hungers, these cravings to occupy our focus, they will impede our growth in relationship to God, to others, and to self. And thus cunningly distort the answer to that important question, where does my security reside. Like liquor or any other addictive substance, an abundance of any kind of possessions can, note and saying can, not will, can make people high and can give a false sense of security. To quell the nerves before engaging in an activity, one may have a little alcoholic beverage, but too many, and alas, one may indeed be akin to the rich fool. My brothers and sisters, no amount of wealth, no amount of money, no number of possessions, no amount of power can secure our lives. None of these can improve our relationships, our health, or keep our worlds from falling apart. Only God, in his infinite love and generous mercy, can do this. Thus, the challenge in Jesus' words. Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. This challenge must be heeded by you and by me. That pesky question this morning, where does my security lie? If seriously and honestly contemplated under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, can become the necessary benchmark as we face a spiritual test in deciding, will my heart choose to trust in my gifts? my talents, my wealth, 
my competencies, and I am sure we can name other assets. Or will my heart choose to be rich towards God and the things of God? In other words, no matter the quantity and quality of possessions, will I look beyond these fleeting symbols of security to place my trust in the ever-living, ever-loving, ever-present giver of all good gifts? A man whose name I can't remember, but whose image is etched in my memory, was in drug rehab in Jamaica when I met him. When I first laid my eyes on him, his deportment spoke volumes, and I will add positively. As we conversed during group devotions and Bible study, his knowledge of the word was sound. To be honest, I wondered why he was there. I did not have to wait long for my unspoken question to be answered. He shared that he had the gift of being an excellent preacher. In North America, where he resided, he used his gift to move people. Crowds gathered in the mega church to hear him. The more the crowds came, and the more the crowds increased, the more he gave. Regrettably, he said, I took my eyes off him who had given me the gift. I took my eyes off him who had given me the strength. I took my eyes off him who had given me the discernment. My focus on the increasing crowd and on my ability to rouse them and keep them coming paved the way for my downfall. As my body became tired, I took a little something to energize me. I soon began taking harder drugs, and here I am. To me, this interaction with my brother was not accidental. 22 years later, it still serves to remind me that the gift of my vocation and all it entails, including the color and this imperfect self, can become my false symbol of security. My idols, if I allow these to replace God who should occupy my focus. It is in reflection on what I later termed the intended meeting that I was divinely cautioned. To use Jesus' life-giving warning, Take care, Mary. Be on your guard, Mary, against all kinds of greed. Will we heed the warning, beloved in Christ? Does your security, does my security, reside in God who delivers all who cry out to him in our desperate condition? 
Or does that security reside in the gods with a common G who cunningly entice bigger and bigger, better and better, more and more? My brothers and sisters, allow me to share with you the prayer of my heart. It is a verse from the hymn chosen to end the sermon. Oh, for a closer walk with God. And the verse says, The dearest idol I have known, what air that idol be, help me to tear it from thy throne and worship only thee. And Jesus says to us, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of ruin. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of possession. Beloved children of God, will you choose God to reign once more on the throne of your heart? If we do, I invite us to prayerfully sing that wonderful prayer penned by William Cowper. Oh, for a closer walk with God.
Let us now reaffirm our faith in God who never leaves us or forsakes us. God who knows all that we need and desires the best for us. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen or unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, right from the right, true God from true God, begotten from not made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the conscious side. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and Giver of life, Proceed from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. seated prayerfully for the intercession. Let us pray to God, who gives us the everlasting treasures of his love. Keep your church free from all that the world harm her. Keep your church free from all that would harm her witness. Grant that all Christian people being risen in Christ, may grow in holiness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Break through the greed and complacency that are damaging the lives of many. Where there is strife for material possession, bring generosity and concern for the needs of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Keep us, our families, and friends in the way of peace, free from selfish quarrels. Make us more ready to share your good, our good things with those in our community who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on families divided by quarrels over inheritance and ownership. Bring healing where angry words and unjust deeds have separated those who should be close in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died suddenly and unprepared. Grant them pardon and peace through the power of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer our prayers to Christ that they may be pure and free from the taints of sin. Amen. Amen. We continue in prayer. As we went to God, all those who have asked the prayers of this church, we remember Julian Walker and all others who have been or are being airlifted to Miami. We pray that they will know that the God of peace, the God of comfort, the God of love, the God of 
healing accompanies them. But not only accompanies them, but go before them to prepare the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who mourn. We remember Brother Stephen and Sister Jackie and their families as they mourn the death of a beloved mother. We pray for her community, her parish, her island, as they too have lost a soul who shared her marvelous gifts. Those of nursing and that of singing with God and by extension with God's people, even we who worship at St. George's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up the family who is thrown into sudden grief between last night this morning. Let them know that God hears their wives and their hows. And even now, we pray that God in his love and mercy will assure them, I am the and that even as he sends messengers to sit with them, the messengers will be reminded that in times like these, a presence is more important than the battles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in the midst of pain and sorrow and not knowing, there are joys of celebration as we thank God for his goodness to us. And so at this time, we invite those who are celebrating birthdays or wedding anniversaries come forward in thanksgiving to God and receive your blessing from him. Kevin and Lorna Washington, John and Suzette Darby, Dawson and Jackie Kelly who will celebrate wedding anniversaries. Komal Lawrence, Denver Bloomfield, Hugh John Richards, Milant Brown, Marcia Harrison, Melissa Thomas, Andrew Walton, and Sandra Steer, who are celebrating birthdays. Gracious and ever-loving God, we give thanks for these blessed milestones. We are reminded that were it not for your grace, were it not for your mercy, your children would not be able to embrace and celebrate. So continue to lavish them with your love as you shower your blessings upon them. Help them to keep their focus on you. You, the giver of each day, 
of each year. Without you, we can do nothing. And so to you we say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness to them and to us. Lord, in your love, hear us, we pray. My brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us in the silence of our hearts confess our sins to the healer of all souls. Unity, we confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved ourselves as we ought. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be right in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so pardoned we can stand in joy as we share the peace with others. We are the body of Christ. By the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that made for peace and build up the common life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Send a smile with the peace. <laughs> Do you feel the warmth? Thanks be the God.
for the presentation of the offerings. Father, the offering is this which you have given us, this bread, this wine, this wine. We thank you all for ourselves, our lives, and our work to become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become channels of your love. Through the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. the death your 
your son endured for our salvation. His glorious resurrection and ascension. His continual intercession for us in heaven. And looking for his coming again in glory. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and life-giving sacrifice. Look with favor on your church's offering and grant that we who eat and drink these holy gifts may be filled with your Holy Spirit and become one body in Christ and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. May he make us a perpetual offering to you and enable us in communion with Blessed Mary, Blessed George, and the whole company of heaven to share in the inheritance of your sins. With him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven in songs of everlasting
gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing that songs of praise to Him.
are troubling and unstable times for us who are the girls. Even more so, let us think about our children. There are so many decisions they have to make. There are so many burdens placed among on their shoulders. <clears throat> Some that we, without thinking, place. Gracious God, help them to know that you love them. They are yours, <coughs> and you provide for them. This morning we ask that you give them with the spirit of contentment so that when they look at others they do not yearn for what the others have and sometimes they fall prey to the temptation to do whatever it takes to acquire those things dear God help them before they need to ask you, what would you have us do, dear Lord? Show us the way. Father, we ask that this morning you speak directly to parents, to grandparents, to godparents, and the adults in their lives. Help them to use this summer recess to make the time to walk with their youth, to listen to their youth, even as they listen to you, so that they can be channels of your wisdom in these as a church, a gathered community, help us to be willing to allow you to guide us beyond ourselves so that we may serve our youth lovingly and so point them beyond the things of the earth to the things that are of Place a smile in their hearts and on their lips as they hear us say, We love you, but God loves you even more. Hear our prayer, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, good morning, Sister Andrea. I'm quite going to do not to sit out as we keep up my brother and her steps. Place a smile on our hearts and lips as we hear Jesus says, I love you. We can take that with us for the rest of the day. Welcome to our online members as brothers, those present with us this morning. If we have any first time visitors who would like to be acknowledged, um, kindly stand, say where you're from, and we'll give you a warm sense of this welcome. Okay. We are very happy to have our cantor with us this morning. Indeed, her lovely singing enriched our worship. May God continue to bless you as we use your gifts to his honor and glory. We are happy to have you here. Our deepest condolences go out to Brother Stephen Gay and family on the passing of his mom, Enid Gay. Rest eternal grant her, O oh Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of the faithfully departed, with the mercies of God, rest in peace. Our hymn the ecumenical service to mark Jamaica's Sixth Day of Independence will be on Sundays. August 7th at 4 o'clock at the Victory Tabernacle Church. All are invited. There will also be an observance um, next Sunday at 8 a.m. at St. George's. So we'll have our own Jamaica Independent Service celebration. Congratulations go out to Brother Dominique Owens, who was awarded Bachelor in Accounting and Finance with Upper Second Class Honors. This is from the University of Bristol. He will be attending the University of Virginia in August to pursue an, a master's in accounting. We wish him continued success and God's richest blessings. The next Sunday, the first Sunday of August, is an offering will be greatly received towards the church's insurance. Envelopes will be available at the usher's desk for your contribution, and these may be placed in the offering plates during the singing of the offering. That's the walk.
those are the notices. Have a blessed week, everyone, and we'll see you next Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, as a place of transition, to invite all our brothers and sisters who are Jamaicans, although we are having the official service in the evening, still please come in your green and gold and black, and we will celebrate as a church as best we can. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, in celebrating Dominique, our baby, <laughs> who we are privileged to see grown into such a fine young man and attaining his master of sciences in accounting. Bachelor, I am for we also say congratulations to his parents. Yes. Your love, your sacrifice, your support, sometimes having to encourage and encourage firmly paid off. And so his honors are your honors. God bless you as you continue to strive with your children to serve the God who gives you many beautiful back with us and not the instrument we are accustomed to <laughs> but you see he is multi-talented and so we thank God for him and we pray that God will continue to prosper him and the gifts that God has given Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Have a blessed day and indeed a blessed and beautiful week. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.